Today I was on my way here and I bumped into my MP, my Labour MP for Greenwich, Matthew Pennycook, and I've been emailing him a lot and I said, oh, hello, are you going to vote for a ceasefire on Wednesday? And he still could not even say that he's going to vote for a ceasefire. What more do they need to vote for a ceasefire? There's over 1.5 million people who have been displaced so many times, I think the average is six, so many people have been displaced more than six times, squished into the bottom in Rafa, they're being bombed, they have absolutely nothing, and this man in very wealthy Greenwich, in his comfortable home, can't even say to this corrupt parliament, yes, let's vote for a ceasefire. So, we, we can't lose hope, because there is so much hope here, and there is so much power, and this is really transformative being here with all these people. So I don't want to say that I've lost hope, but it's really hard to keep hope when those people in that, in that building, that stupid old building, are thinking that they're speaking for us and they're not speaking for us. They're really not speaking for the people and something needs to change. So many kids that come to these uh, protests, I think that's what's really important to drive that message and get the younger generation speaking about it. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest I've been on. Uh, I've been standing here for the last half hour and I thought it was at the end of the march and yet it just keeps on coming. It's been an amazing turnout and it's, uh, it's great to be around like-minded people who are just saying no, we will not do this. We will not allow this to happen in our time and in our name. What we've seen with the people on the streets is slowly making changes. It's the government, they can't ignore the people forever. We're, at some point they're going to have to listen to us. So whether we're here for five more marches, whether we're here for 50 more marches, at some point they will listen to us. I've come down today for the reason being that I think it's, it's the only way that you can support the poor children, men, women, children, who have been slaughtered by a regime who are, the, in my view, the scum of the earth. How these politicians, the Israeli politicians, can call themselves in any way religious. I don't know what religion it is. It must be the religion of Satan. It must be the religion of Satan. That's the only religion that you could you could possibly believe could, could, could people that could sleep at night knowing what they've done. When you look at children with their arms blown off and their legs blown off carrying out a rubble, how do these people sleep at night? It's incredible. And people at Starma and Sunak, you know, it's like a bad dream. You think you're in, I'm, I'm, I must be dreaming this. I'm, I must be dreaming it. It's, it's just incredible how it's against all forms of human nature. I hope and pray that Starmer never gets a vote in Scotland or anywhere else. To me, Starmer, how can he... Uh, he, he, he's a snake, a complete snake, and anybody that trusts him must be mad. To put your ex in the box for Starmer is a vote for genocide. We're here to say, primarily to Labour, what on earth are you guys doing? You spent a lifetime supposedly representing the people, and you have now sold your souls. We, the people here, are never going to forget there are people here from every background, every religion, every tribe, every nation, and we will never forget. We are gonna come together, we're gonna support one another, we're gonna lobby, we're gonna campaign, we're gonna boycott, and we're not gonna let you off the hook here. How dare the establishment ever lecture us again on human rights? How dare they? 
This is not a grey matter. This is very simply about the murder of children, about the murder of civilians and about the implementation of international law. We, the voters, have been abandoned in a way that we could never have imagined and we will never, ever forget. The government don't represent us, they manage us. And they don't give a fuck about killing anyone. First it's these guys in Gaza, next it's you. Fucking you. And your kids. Kids first, maybe. As we speak, the forces of the Israeli occupation stand ready to invade Rafah, an area the size of Heathrow Airport, which is now the most densely populated area on this earth. The invasion of Rafah is the culmination of the long-planned Israeli genocide against the heroic people of Gaza. What we are seeing is not a second Nakba or another Nakba, it is an ongoing Nakba, a project that has lasted for over 75 years without pause. What we are seeing is a colonial apartheid state doing what it has been doing every day since 1948. But despite everything, the Palestinian people have refused to forget. From generation to generation, they have passed down the keys to their homes, the memories and the traditions of their communities, the unwavering commitment to returning to their homes. This is why Israel attempts to drive them away. The cowards in London, the cowards in Washington, the cowards in Tel Aviv, they know that they cannot break the steadfast determination of the Palestinian people. They spent millions of pounds on the most advanced weapon systems in the world, not only to murder and to maim, but also to try and destroy that dream of liberation and of return. Now, as we face the horrifying evil of the Israeli military, we must heed with a renewed urgency the Palestinian call to organize in solidarity to hold our politicians to account, to shut down the British war machine which arms Israeli genocide. We must gather our anguish, our pain, our rage, but most importantly, we must gather our hope. A hope born out of our certainty that there is no Western weapon, there is no apartheid law, there is no evacuation order that can ever defeat the spirit of the Palestinian people. Thank you, London. We hear you. Thank you for your support. And to be honest, you have been one of the very few signs of hope in these very, very dark days. I come to you as a proud Palestinian, and I bring you greetings from the birthplace of Jesus from Bethlehem in Palestine. And when I see your support, and when I see your passion for justice, I am assured that freedom is coming. I remember the words of Jesus. I remember the words of Jesus, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, for justice, for they shall be satisfied. We shall be satisfied. It has been far, far too long for us in Palestine. And today we say enough, enough colonization, enough occupation, enough apartheid, enough of this siege. And today we say in one voice, stop this genocide. Friends, Gaza today is indeed the moral compass of the world. And I know that you have come from different faith and secular traditions. And I greet you and bless you. And believe me, you are on the right side of history. This war, this war I truly believe, has clearly divided our world. And maybe this is a good thing. We need to know where people stand. And when I say Gaza is the moral compass of the world, we either side with the logic of power and ruthlessness and with the lords of war, or we side with the oppressed. It's really a simple choice. You either support a genocide, 
you either turn a blind eye and justify your genocide or you cry out, no, not in our name. Gaza is a human cry. Gaza is a moral cry. This is not about politics. For if you are not shaken to your call by the brutal killing of more than 12,000 precious Palestinian children, it is on you. There is nothing we can do to help you. The world will not recover. Our humanity will not recover. And history will not be merciful, should not be merciful, towards those who are complicit with the genocide. Their names are stained in history books. And as a man of faith, as a pastor, I am convinced that deep inside they will be haunted by the images of the children and mothers of Gaza. And we must make sure we keep reminding them, shaming them for their complicity and for their role. At the same time, we are grateful for the support of many around the world. And today, again, I say, London, we hear you. From Palestine, we hear you. We need to turn the table on the lords of war. We need to turn the table. And the streets today, the streets today hold moral authority and credibility, not the so-called civilized that praise human rights and international law while turning a blind eye to a genocidal war in Gaza. This is where the moral credibility lies today. Today we think and salute our heroes in Gaza. We salute the first responders, the journalists, the nurses, the doctors, many of whom have sacrificed their lives. Of them, of these heroes, we say the world was not worthy of them. They are too honorable. They have honor. Dear friends, we should not rest until this war has ended. This should be our commitment. We owe it to them. We owe it to the people of Gaza, to the children of Gaza. We owe it to the heroic sacrifices of those people of Gaza. Let this be our commitment. We cannot fail them. We will not fail them. We should not stop protesting. This is the least we can do to them. For when all is said and done, when all is said and done, we will all look in the mirror and ask, where was I when Gaza was going through a genocide? How will we answer to them? And we will say, we were in the streets, we were in the squares, we were in parliaments, we were turning tables, we were advocating, pleading, shouting and praying, stop this genocide. We were working for justice. And believe me, the day is coming when we will live life that is free from apartheid, free from occupation. Justice is coming. Freedom is coming. Truth is coming. Let justice roll down like waters. Friends, and I speak now from the heart, never in my life have I been more proud and honored to be a Palestinian more than these last 130 days. I am proud of our resilience, of our sumud. I am proud of our solidarity with one another, our unity. And when I say we will be okay and that we will recover, I say it because I know my people, I know who we are as Palestinians. Palestine is our homeland. We are deeply rooted in Palestine. And for those of you who are exiled around the world, I know that Palestine lives in you. So today I say thank you on behalf of every Palestinian for your solidarity. Thank you for your tireless efforts. From the bottom of our heart, we love and appreciate every one of you. Today I pray and I hope I ask you to pray with me, Lord, have mercy. Lord, send true peacemakers and justice seekers into our world. 
Lord, awaken the conscience of world leaders. Lord, stop this genocide. And we say together, stop this genocide. Thank you. When we witness this genocide that is going on, what are we seeing the governments of the world doing? The Jordan and the UAE are allowing Israel to get goods through their countries in opposition to the people of that country. The Egyptians say they oppose the Israelis, but they are going to facilitate any ethnic cleansing that takes place. Joe Biden told the Israelis they are over the top. That is really an understatement for 30,000 people killed, tens of thousands of them children, and for the destruction of every hospital in Gaza. That isn't over the top. That is a brutal war of extermination which they are carrying out, and we have to speak out against it now. For months, the global establishment and the right-wing media have tried to bully us into silence. They try to shame us by equating support for the Palestinian cause with anti-Semitism. They try, they try to say that criticism of Israel, one of the most vicious right-wing states in the world, is anti-Semitism. How dare they? How dare they attack those of us who all our lives of fought against racism. We don't need any lessons from them. It's them who should be ashamed. How sickening, comrades, how sickening to see the President of the United States, the British Prime Minister, and other leaders of the Western world rushing to Tel Aviv to embrace Netanyahu, the butcher of Gaza, a man who is an international criminal breaking for decades international law and waiting for charges of corruption. You don't see any of them rushing to Rafa to embrace the mothers who for weeks have watched their children being slaughtered. Shame on them. And what about Keir Starmer? Yeah, you may well boo. A so-called human rights lawyer who, who supported the blockade of food, of medicine, of water to innocent women and children. Hang your head in shame, Stormer. You know, someone once said that for evil to triumph, good men and women must stand silent and be under no illusion. What's going on in Gaza today is unadulterated evil and we will not stand silent. On Wednesday in Parliament, there will be another vote. Again, callings for a ceasefire. This will be yet another test of where these politicians stand. So friends, mark carefully all those who refuse to vote for a ceasefire, all those who vote for continued slaughter, and all those who abstain, even in the face of such horrific slaughter. And remember, friends, when we go to the ballot box, we will never again vote for a politician who has not called for a ceasefire. Since October, we have seen a spiraling of horror. Remember when they tried to tell us that Israel didn't bomb a hospital? When they tried to tell us that that was fake news, that how could we say that Israel bombed a hospital? But now we see that Israel has bombed every hospital and put every single hospital in Gaza out of use. Yet there is silence. So let us be clear with the international powers that be that their failure to stop this genocide means that they are losing all moral authority, that history will judge them accordingly, and that their failure to act is not done in our name, and it is not done in the names of the millions of people that stand with Gaza, that stand with Palestine today. 
They have stood. They have stood idly by while Israel attempts to raise an entire people from the face of the earth. As Israel stands on the brink of a full ground invasion into Rafah, there has never been a more critical time to raise your voice and act for Gaza. This is a genocide that will haunt us for the rest of our lives. So in the upcoming general election, it is imperative that we hold all those accountable that have allowed this to continue. No ceasefire, no vote. No ceasefire. No ceasefire. We must ensure that all those complicit in the suffering of the Palestinians are held responsible at the ballot box. Now you all have the opportunity to punish both of these parties, Labour and the Conservatives who've wrought hell on the people of Gaza. They have given Israel diplomatic cover and have not questioned the supply of weaponry. They've spent months saying Israel has a right to self-defense, yet today they use clever words to show mild criticism of Israel. They talk of a sustained ceasefire, an Orwellian term to mean a ceasefire once Israel has completed its ethnic cleansing. In Ilford North, our message is no ceasefire, no vote. Let this be the rallying cry everywhere, a universal call for accountability and a steadfast commitment to justice. No ceasefire. No ceasefire. No ceasefire. Next week, the SNP will present another crucial ceasefire motion in Parliament, giving MPs the opportunity to make a resolute stand against genocide or find themselves on the wrong side of history. The choice is clear and it will be remembered. And never forget those who had the opportunity to endorse a ceasefire last year, but chose not to, even if they reconsider their stance in the upcoming week. We should never have to explain why the remains of a child hanging from a building wall with her legs blown off is wrong. We should never have to plead for a genocide, a hundred and for a ceasefire 134 days into a genocide. Yet, in the face of such atrocities, we have the collective power to honor the memory of these 28,000 Palestinians killed, and we can do this in the upcoming general election. The Labour Party is sadly the greatest culprit here. They could have stopped this. They could have acted as an opposition. Instead, they chose to collude with Sunak and Biden. You cannot allow these people your vote. You must vote for independent or pro-Palestine candidates. Search them out if you can't organize and unite for your brothers and sisters in Gaza. The next election is about Gaza because Gaza signifies humanity. It signifies morality. It's come to symbolize all that is horrid and distorted in this world to an unjust order that should no longer prevail. Do not let them get away with it. If you live in Ilford North, Bethnal Green and Stepney, Dewsbury, Birmingham Ladypool, Slough, Leicester South, Wickham. If you live in any of these seats and more, vote them down. We see our colleagues every single day risking their lives to report the horrors being inflicted on their own family members. We salute the courage of journalists like Wail al Dahdu, who had to report on the killing of his own wife who had to report on the killing of his own daughter, who had to report on the killing of his own cameraman who was left to bleed in a school because the Israelis never stopped firing. We in positions of power and influence have a duty to report the truth on what's happening in Palestine. And the very least we can do in our comfortable newsrooms here in the UK is to speak truth to power, to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. When we talk about the Palestinian people, we use the passive tongue. We say that the Palestinian people are found dead. They were not found dead, they were killed. And we must name the killer the same way we name the killer when we talk about murder in this country. We are talking about mass murder. I want to leave you with the words of Mautaz Azazi, the Palestinian photojournalist who never took a break and reported every single day for months for the Palestinian people. He said, as humans, we all have a responsibility to bear witness to what is happening in Gaza. I tried my best to show the world our reality. Now the world needs to show where it stands. It is ordinary people, men and women, who have the power to save what remains of Palestine. Our plea is a simple one. 
We just want to live. People ask us in the Jewish bloc, why are you marching? Those people in Gaza, in the West Bank, those Palestinians, they're not your people. Well, we say, I say, my Jewish grandparents were refugees, right? They came from Russia, Germany, Poland and Ukraine more than 100 years ago, escaping racist persecution. They did not flee oppression in the 19th century for Israel to oppress Palestinians in the 21st century and claim they are doing it for us. We say, not in our name. My Jewish parents raised me to care about injustice in our streets, in our town, in our country, all over the world. We remember millions slaughtered in the Nazi Holocaust. We mourn that genocide. We mourn all genocides in history. And we swear never again, anywhere, for anyone. The Republic of South Africa proved to the International Court of Justice that Israel was plausibly guilty of genocide in Gaza. On January 26th, the ICJ said Israel must prevent the killing of Palestinians and the destruction of the means of life. Israel must provide humanitarian aid. It must prevent incitement to genocide. Yesterday, the ICJ reiterated its ruling. It said the perilous situation in Rafa demands immediate and effective, I'm quoting here, implementation of the provisional measures which are applicable throughout the Gaza Strip. Now we know Israel continues to do the opposite of all those things in front of the eyes of the world and our leaders continue to arm and finance them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, 250,000 of us here today in solidarity with the people of Palestine. There are demonstrations going on today in 120 cities around the world, in 45 different countries around the world. Millions of people on the streets, on the march, demonstrating their solidarity with the people of Palestine under siege right now. We've got to carry on. This is the 14th national demonstration and there's going to be as many more as it takes until there is a ceasefire, until there is justice for the Palestinian people. It's also a day to remember these are the truth tellers, those journalists who tell us the reality of the bombardment of Gaza, those people that tell us the reality of the global arms trade and what its consequences are. And so on Tuesday of this week, something very important is happening. Julian Assange's case goes back to the High Court. Please support Julian Assange for telling the truth, telling the truth about war, telling the truth about global corporations and about the reality of what wars do. As I am speaking, as I am here now, there are a million people in Rafa under siege, without enough water, without enough food, without enough medicines, without proper sanitation. The population of Rafa has gone up sevenfold in the last two months. They cannot cope with the demands of the people there. They're massed around the border, desperate to try and get somewhere to be safe. And they were told that going to Rafa would be safe. And Israel is now preparing to bombard Rafa, an already chronically overcrowded, chronically undersupplied city. 
the carnage that has already happened with 30,000 dead, almost half of those are children, will get so much worse as soon as that bombardment starts. And so I ask two questions. This bombardment has gone on now since October. Already the people of Gaza were under siege. The consequences are horrific. The generation of orphans growing up in Gaza, having seen their families killed and destroyed by American supplied weapons going flying over them. The mental health stress, even if there was a ceasefire tomorrow, will last for decades and decades for those poor people that have already suffered years of siege and in the case of the West Bank of occupation. We're witnessing something globally horrific in real time on our televisions. In real time on our televisions, the carnage goes on. And so on Wednesday, when the UK Parliament has a motion before it, tabled by the Scottish National Party, I am signing in support of that motion. And I want every one of you here, demand, demand of your MP, your elected representative, be there, vote for a ceasefire. No ifs, no buts, no qualifications, just call for a complete ceasefire and respect for the International Court of Justice decision. The International Court of Justice has made its views clear. The UN has made its votes clear. And in the words of Anthony Guterres, this issue didn't come from nowhere. Awful as the events of October the 7th were, it didn't start then. It started with the Nakba in 1948. It went on with the occupation. It's been on with endless wars ever since. What we're now seeing is a second Nakba where if Israel gets its way, more than a million Palestinians will be forced out of Gaza into the Sinai to set up a new Gaza Strip as once more the horror story of the lives of Palestinians goes on. Well, the message here from London today is we're having none of that. We're not going to allow our government to support that. We are here with the Palestinian people for peace, for freedom, for justice, and we ain't ever going away. Thank you. This is the ninth demonstration that you've been involved in since October, isn't it? Uh, yes, this is the PSC and the wider coalition's uh, ninth national march for freedom and justice for the Palestinian people since, uh, yeah, since October. And, I mean, the numbers have been incredible all the way, and, and I find it hilarious every week to see it's like 12,000 on, on the reporting, whereas we see it as like 250,000. Why do you think they keep um, undersizing or underestimating the numbers? I mean, it's a, it's a tactic that the police use a lot, right? If you look at their estimates for, I mean, going as far back as um, the Iraq war demo, which had a million people on it, one of the, uh, you know, before our Million Man March, the, the largest demonstration in, in British history. Uh, they, I think they said that there were four or five hundred thousand people on that. You know, it's a it's a police it's a tactic the police have used for a long time. Please come, Royal Courts of Justice, this Tuesday and Wednesday. Please come to support Julian Assange, who supports Palestine and Gaza. Please support Julian Assange at the Royal Courts of Justice this Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you. The Assange case is, is massive. He is, not only did he expose the crimes of US imperialism, he has exposed the corruption of our judiciary, the corruption of our political class and our corruption of our entire judicial system. Assange was there for us, we need to be there for him. In order to free ourselves, we need to first free Julian Assange.